Hey, how's it going everyone? It's Lee Halliday. Today we are going to learn how to initialize Prisma and how to set up seed data so that when we're developing the rest of our application, we have a lot of dummy data to work with. We're going to be doing this inside of Next.js, but really this would apply for sort of any backend application that you're using Prisma as your database ORM. So we're gonna run yarn Prisma in it. And that command is gonna set up some initial folder structure and files we need to um, basically define the scheme of our database and so it knows how to connect and things like that. So it's going to tell us some steps here. We're just gonna skip that and do it ourselves. So let's go over into the code. And here we see that we have a Prisma folder created with one thing inside the schema.prisma. And one of the first things you'll notice in here is that it's looking at an environment variable database URL. So Prisma has generated this one, this .n file, that's not being committed into our repo because you, you don't want to commit your database password and then publish it online for everyone to see. It's filled it in here with, with some dummy, dummy connection string. We're going to get rid of that. And I've got Postgres running locally on my Mac using the Postgres app. I'm on Postgres 12, but that doesn't really matter. And what I'm going to do is hop over to Table Plus that I like to use to sort of manage my database locally. And I'm gonna right click on my connection and I'm gonna copy as URL. So what that's going to give me is this super long string, most of which doesn't matter, but uh, I'll point out the important parts. So we're connecting to Postgres. Um, I think this is user, my sort of local dev password, the host it's connecting to, question mark, get rid of all of that. We don't need it. But we are going to add a slash here and tell it what our database is that we're connecting to. So I'm going to go back to table plus, connect, and then I'm going to create a new database. So we'll call this um, Next.js GraphQL. We'll just go with defaults everywhere. So created that and then we'll go into this database. So Next.js GraphQL, just like this. So Postgres will use this to connect, but we haven't really defined our database schema yet. So we're going to come inside of this schema.prisma file and we're going to generate two database tables or models that Prisma calls them. The first one is going to be album. We're, we're modeling albums and artists. So the relationship will be each artist has many albums and each album belongs to one artist. So the columns in here will be an integer for our ID, which will be um, a default value of auto increment, just like that. It's also gonna have a name, which is a string, a year, also a string. So you may be thinking, why a year is a string? It's a number. Well, you could do it as a number, as an integer, but unless you're like adding dates together, like 2020 plus 2020, I just prefer to have it as a string. And then we define the relationship. So the artist will point to an artist model that we haven't created yet. This is a relation. Let's give it the fields. So it's gonna join on the artist ID and that is going to reference um, the ID column in the other table. So it's freaking out a little bit right now. It's saying, hey, artist doesn't exist. We'll, we'll solve that in a second, but first we just have to give it the artist ID field, which will be an integer. So let's go down here now and we'll define an uh, artist and we'll give it the ID of int. Um, it's an ID column. Its default is also auto increment. And we're going to give it a name string and we'll store the artist's um, URL to their website. So it's still not happy. And the reason why is because it wants sort of the opposite relation. So we just need to define albums here and that it will be an array of that. So this is our database schema. There's a command you can run yarn prisma format and that will just sort of format this beautifully. So now we wanna basically take this schema and migrate our database to look like this. So for that, what you're going to do is you're gonna run yarn prisma db for, to start. This won't do anything, but it will tell you the different commands you can run. So what we want to do 
is we want to migrate our database. So where is the migrate command? Maybe that's actually on Prisma itself. Yeah. So it's yarn Prisma migrate dev. So running this, it's going to ask for the name of the migration. So we'll just call this the initial, um, initial schema. And it's going to now basically take a look at where our database was and get it into the state that's defined here in this schema.prisma file. So if we were to go back here, we now have an album table, we have an artist table, and basically we're set up. So sort of pause that from there, um, and now we're going to move on to how can we populate this um, database with a bunch of seed dummy data that we can use while we're developing. So we're going to create a file in here called seed.ts for TypeScript. And in here, we are going to import the Prisma client from at Prisma client. And then we're going to create sort of an instance of that. So const Prisma is equal to new Prisma client. And now we're going to define an async function called main, async function main which will be called and do all of the work of seeding our database. So for now, we'll just say console.log seeding like that. And we need to call this. So we're gonna call main and we're gonna catch an error. So if there's an error, we'll get that error here. We'll console.error it so we can see what it is. And then we'll just exit the process because, um, and one means I, I think forget what one means actually. I think like it's a caught exception and it's it's not exiting via an error, but uh, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's the exact opposite of that. But what we definitely want to do, whether it were, whether it failed and it was caught or whether it worked fine, is finally what we want to do is basically disconnect from the database. So we're going to create an async function here, just an arrow function, and we're going to call Prisma and we're going to call a dollar sign disconnect function so that it, it frees up that connection to the database. So if we were to run this now, so that would be yarn prisma db and it is db seed, I believe it is. So we'll try that and um, it doesn't like that. So seeding the database, I guess, is a preview feature right now, which means maybe it's going to be changing. So we can just add in that uh, preview feature and hopefully it works, but it doesn't, it fails. I knew it was gonna fail, I acted surprised, but really I knew. So it doesn't like import here. Uh, it doesn't like that syntax, cannot use import statement outside of a module. So we need to tweak um, TS node command to be able to, to use this import syntax. So to do that, we're gonna head on over to the package.json and we're gonna come here and define sort of our own TS node um, script. So in here, we'll call the real TS node. And then what we wanna do is basically pass in a compiler option so that it knows to basically support the import command. So we're gonna say compiler options and you're supposed to pass in sort of a JSON object of, of options here. And we want to basically support module of common JS. But you can see how my quotes are all screwed up here. And you're actually supposed to have quotes around module too. So we're just going to um, escape those. And then we're going to pass this in a single quoted string like that. So now if we run our seed again, hopefully it will work and the output we should just see is um, seeding. That was that console.log and it says our database has been seeded in just under four seconds. But we didn't actually put any data in our database. So that's what we're gonna do now. And in here, you can basically just use the Prisma client like you are using it in any part of your code base. So what we can do here is we can say Prisma and we're going to use the artist table and we want to create some data. So what do we want to create? We want to create, um, let's create an artist, uh, Justin Bieber, because uh, proud Canadian. 
And the URL for Justin Bieber, I have no clue. Let's just say uh, HTTPS www colon slash slash www.bieber.ca. Okay, so Justin, the artist, is going to have many albums. So we're going to now pass the albums that we can create. And that will be an object which will itself not have data, but it will create some data. And in here, we are going to have an array of the art, the albums we want to create. So each of our albums, if you remember, it has a name. I don't know what the name of his albums are. Uh, it's shameful, I know, but uh, a name and a year. So let's just say 2010, he created this album and we'll, we'll do another after in uh, 2011. Believer Bieber, again, I don't know. Okay, so now when we run this, it's going to hopefully insert Justin Bieber into our database. So we'll just run this uh, command again. And now we can come and refresh here and we can see that we have Justin Bieber and Bieber has two albums and it's, it's related together. Because we created our data sort of this way through using the relationship in Prisma, we didn't have to sort of point them to each other. It already knew how to do that. And this is great if you want to sort of, every developer gets one artist, Justin Bieber, with two albums. But what if you wanted to work with like 100 albums and you didn't really care what they were exactly, you just wanted a bunch of data to, to work with. So for that, we are going to import Faker from the Faker package. And we're going to basically going to fake out, let's just say 100 different artists. So we're going to use a for statement where we let i equal to zero, continue while i is less than 100, and increment i once each time. We're going to move this up inside of our for loop. And this would create 100 Justin Bieber's. Nobody wants that. So what we're going to do is use Faker to generate some fake data. So the first thing, we want a fake artist name. So why don't we call it the, and then maybe we'll use, we'll highlight a few different features of Faker. So the first one will be maybe city name. Um, so we'll call faker.address.city, like that. And then the next one will maybe do the day of the week. So it'll be like the Detroit Mondays or the Toronto Tuesdays or something like that. So we'll say Faker date and then there's one here called weekday and then we can just add an s on the end so that will generate sort of everyone will have different city names different weekdays we need a url so we can say faker dot what is it internet dot uh url so that will give us um it's a function call it that will give us a fake url so if you want to know what these all are, go to the Faker website and it gives you a list of sort of every Faker producing function you can call. There's a ton of them. Uh, we're just using a few here. And then we want to have, let's just say two albums for each of them. So we need to give it a name. Let's say the first name is going to be Faker dot, um, I don't even know, commerce dot, um, product name. So that's going to be a pretty weird product name. We'll say all of these are in 2010, but then we'll do something else for this one here. So faker dot um, commerce. No, we used commerce last time. Faker dot, what do we want? Data type dot, um, I don't know, UUID. So that will create us a UUID. And for our year, why don't we make it a random year of the year 2000? So we'll just say math.random, and then we'll say two fixed, so uh, at two decimal places, and then that's a string with two decimal places. So we'll just maybe substring, that should be in our thing here, substring, and we'll get the last two um, characters from that. So why don't we run this now? 
And one thing to keep in mind is every time you run this, it's going to insert new data. So if you want a fresh start every time, you could maybe do something like this. You could just say await prisma.album.deleteMany. So clear out all the albums and then clear out all the artists. True story, once I had code like this for a client and I ran the seed script on production and it the first lines deleted production data. It was a disaster, but thankfully there was like a, a backup and I could restore. So keep in mind, you probably shouldn't run your seed data on production. Maybe you should have like a if process dot env dot node env is not equal to development. Like get out of here. That might be a good line to run um, at the beginning of this. But anyways, so let's run this. This is going to generate us 100 random artists, each with two albums. And then we'll come back here and refresh this and it didn't do that. So maybe maybe because what is the node env? Maybe I screwed that up. All right, let's see. Console.log. Um, let's see what it is. Oh, it's undefined. I don't know why it's undefined. Um, I guess nobody set it to anything, so that's why it's not there. But this was anyways just to, to prove a point, like be careful where you run this thing because you don't want to run this on production. So if we go back here now, it would have generated um, 100 artists. So here they are, the San Diego Saturdays, the North Juvenile Thursdays. This, they almost seem like real, album, real uh, artist names. And then our albums here. So we have Sleek Concrete Keyboard, Tasty Fresh Fish as our, this was the company, what was that? Product name. And then we have our UUID with a random year in the year sort of 2000s that we generated just using math.random. So anyway, something like this is great to do because now I have 100 artists, 200 albums to work with as I go and build out the rest of this app. And this is prior to me even having the ability to sort of create this data through like a GraphQL API or something like this. So any of the other developers working on this project can just run the seed script locally and now they have a hundred artists to work with as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, take care. Bye.